So let's start with our okay, background. What is HydroSAL? So HydroSAL is a platform of technology. It's a very cost-effective technology and can be used globally. And it's made of submicron spheres. So what is submicron sphere? This is a tiny sphere with a diameter of 0.1 to 0.3 microns. So you cannot really see it unless you're using a micro uh, scanning electron microscope. Uh, the structure is the following. There is a core, a very porous material contains the core and the active ingredients or the functional ingredient is encapsulated within the core. Then there is a shell and the shell is the factor that limits the release rate. So uh, again, a porous core and a shell and the active ingredient is always uh, inside the core. Now, when I use active or functional ingredient, um, active typically relating to regulated like pharmaceutical ingredients and functional ingredient is typically uh, used in the cosmetic for cosmetic activity. Okay, so this is the basic structure of hydrocell. Now, we have two types of hydrocell. So we are moving into a little bit more details. We have hydrocell type one, and this is what you see in the picture. And this is a technology that's suitable for water-based applications only, which means it's compatible with different types of bases that are only water. What's unique about it, it is opaque. Not all OPEC technologies, not all OPEC hydrocell are hydrocell one, but hydrocell one is a special structure and the appearance is very characteristic. Compared to this hydrocell two, hydrocell two is a clear technology and this is the only technology that Salvona has and as much as I know the rest of the world, which is compatible with hydroalcoholic bases. So if you have a hydroalcoholic, like a deodorant spray, or anything with alcohol and water, then hydrocell 2 would be your technology. Now, what is the purpose of the technology? We'll come to this in a second. But what, first of all, do you need to know about the benefits of hydrocell? Number one, hydrocell enables you to encapsulate a variety of functional ingredients. When I say variety, I mean hydrophobic, hydrophilic, and so on. And it's very easy to formulate with this because it is compatible with a variety of thickeners regardless of the charge. So they are compatible with anionic, cationic, non-ionic, and so on. So this is a major benefit. Number three, this is the most cost-effective solution. In other words, this is the delivery system that costs you the least compared to liposome, cell sphere, my, my multi cell, and so on. So this is in terms of cost, the cheapest, which means you can afford to use it in multiple product. Now, what is the benefit? Why should you use it? And here are a few of the benefits. First of all, it gives you protection from oxidation or premature oxidation. Then it gives you the major ability, the major function of a delivery. In order to get time release, you need adhesion. Adhesion is connected to time release. So the delivery system has to stick to the surface in order to give you long lasting benefits. So this is elementary in a delivery system. If a delivery system doesn't stick to the skin, of course, it cannot give you a long lasting release because it will be either washed off or degradable. The major uniqueness of hydrocell is the ability to adhere. Then this technology has another function. It can be triggered by water, such as the body moisture. So you can apply it on the skin or hair. It will stick to the surface. And then whenever you perspire, automatically it will release the ingredients or will burst even release the ingredients. So how this all works? I hope that if I go into a little bit of details, it will give you some imagination and better understanding of the value of this technology. So again, hydrocell encapsulation is encapsulation that occurs in situ. What does it mean? 
It happens on the, during the use on the surface. So if you look uh, at these images from the left to the right, so you can see there is a core with the active ingredients incorporated in the center. And then we have a shell. Everything is surrounded with water and the blue dots resemble the water. Now, this is how you get the product. This is how you put it in the base. Now you apply it, you spray it on the surface. What happens over time is the water in the product evaporates. As the water evaporates, the polymers that made up the shell collapse because there is nothing to plasticize them. So they collapse and they form a nice film around the core. This is the encapsulation itself. So encapsulation in this case occurs during the process of using the product without any external, no need for external energy to accelerate the evaporation. Now you understand why it's also cheaper. And it forms naturally on the surface, including the surface of the sphere. This is now, the materials now in the core are locked in and fully encapsulated. Now, this can stay like this for years, but now at a certain time, when there is water in the environment, the water will break down the shell and the material now that was encapsulated, now is allowed to be released. So this is the mechanism. Again, it's a shell that's suspended in water. It's drying off, it's changing. It's a, a transformation of the structure and then it's sensitive to water and it can immediately break down and release. So this is our basic structure. Now what's unique? What's unique is the in situ encapsulation. There are many types of encapsulation that are based on the same structure of core and shell. But typically we have to prepare the core and the shell up front and then you put it in the formula and then you can use it in a finished product. This is not the case here, okay? Here it's not the case. Here we're talking about in situ encapsulation. So we incorporate the functional ingredient into the core and then natural drying of the product on the surface, whether it's skin, hair, hard surface, fabric, and so on, that will complete the encapsulation. So the shell will form during the drying process. This is the uniqueness of hydrosol. So hydrosol, because of this function, can be used with multiple ingredients, such as fragrances and essential oil. Fragrances typically have a high melting point, so they tend to evaporate. And if you lock them in, you can retain them and slowly release them later on. The same thing goes with acids. By retaining some of the acid, we don't uh, dry out the skin, but we gradually release the acid in a way that it's more balanced, allow the skin to handle it in a safe way. The same thing goes with vitamins, a variety of botanical extract. In this presentation, I will demonstrate you uh, materials coming from botanicals and they have antiseptic properties. Okay, then sensory materials, such as materials that providing a cooling, refreshing, a tingling effect. Uh, then different minerals that can slowly release, amino acids and peptides, uh, polyphenols, um, which are antioxidants, and other properties, now skin tightening, uh, firming of the skin, and of course visual effects, such as adding shine, or thickening the hair, illusion of thickening the hair, uh, style protecting, anti-freeze product, everything to do with hair, uh, makeup, sealing the makeup, the color, uh, the, uh, the, the, the powder could be either powder or liquid. And of course, a variety of OTC and RX ingredients such as salicylic acid, minoxidil, and many, many more. So hydrosol is a useful technology because of the functions I mentioned before. And now we're looking into how can we use it to 
uh, enhance our ability to protect the skin.